Welcome everybody to a long overdue uh, episode of Technique Thursday. And uh, it's, I'm sorry it's been so long since I've done a video, um, but I was working on a project and uh, one that's really, I'm way behind on and it's primarily because I can't get that stinking bed just right. But I do want to talk about it a little bit. Um, and I, so I want to talk about uh, using plastic and uh, or styrene as a type of spacer or filler or something to that effect. Um, just recently I sent out two packages uh, to, or three packages actually, but uh, two packages to a couple of subscribers of mine, William Witters and Kevin Cre Creedon. And in, in Kevin's package I gave him a couple tools, so I'm also going to be going over some of those tools, so Kevin pay attention. Um, and, uh, I, basically I, I'm going to be focusing on using plastic styrene and, um, they come in all different types of sizes and they work great with super glue and I use everything from, um, uh, square tubing, which I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's actually a, a tube. Um, there's some benefit to that from sort of like a half I-beam, so to speak, got a slot in there and I'll tell you that sometimes uh, this is beneficial because if you want to uh, practice doing an extension of, of sorts um, I picked the wrong size but uh, basically you get them uh, to work together and it can form a sort of slot or a slide um, comes in larger tubes too and there's different uses for all of it and I'm actually going to be going over each of the pieces that I'm bringing out just to kind of show you um, how I would use them. Um, it comes in L brackets which is great. Uh, I'll give you a couple samples. And they come in like basically what I would call boards. Um, and I get those in different sizes including very thin ones. Um, this is practically paper thin uh, as well as different thicknesses. So um, I'm going to go over a couple of projects and I'll show you how I use them. One of the other things that I sent Kevin was a pair of calipers like this. And Kevin, um, this is basically for getting the exact size that you're looking for. And the caliper has basically two different sides. And yours is a little bit different from the one I have. But um, this would be for measuring the outside edge. Uh, for instance, if you wanted to convert a... Uh, 70 Chevy Blazer into a 67 C10 Blazer well you want to first make sure that the two vehicles are the same width and you just roll this out and kinda get a general idea and uh, you have the ability to lock this in come over here and you can find out that it's just a little bit wider or this truck is a little bit more narrow it's still gonna come together but, uh, the only way you're truly going to get it is with the use of spacers. Now in the background, I've got one of my bed trucks, uh, uh, my f uh, basically 40 Ford flatbed hauler. Um, and with this particular truck, I was able to extend the chassis. Um, if I can get this stinking thing off here. I was able to extend the chassis from the original Corgi wheelbase. And I did that using a thicker styrene to kind of gap the front end of the chassis to the rear end of the chassis. So that's a couple different examples of how you can use these things. But the project I'm going to talk about right now is this Johnny Lightning, uh, I think it's a 51 or 52 Chevrolet pickup. Um, so, um, and I've already taken it apart and done a couple different things. And so I wanted to join a this contest on YouTube or on uh, Facebook called Unibobbers. I'm going to put a couple links at the bottom of this page. So uh, what I'd like for you to do is if you're on Facebook, check out Unibobbers. Uh, tell them Troy sent you. I'm also going to put a link to Kevin Creedon's page. Tell them Troy sent you. I'm going to do it for Ke uh, William Witters. Tell them Troy sent you. And also Bare Metal uh, Hot Wheels. A uh, guy does a fantastic job of tutorials and he's far more... Uh, professional about it than I am. Uh, by the way, when it comes to ca customizing, I consider myself an OSAGI customizer. Uh, I see an idea and I jump on it and then out of the blue I say, oh shit, another good idea. So, OSAGI. Pardon the language. 
So on the Chevy, what I wanted to do was make a rat rod. Uh, and this already has a primer on it, and I like the patina, and I kind of like using the colors as they are. But uh, I wanted to make it a little bit more street. And so uh, to do that, I had to put it on a chassis. The chassis I chose was uh, the 85 Chevy Astro van. It's got a fantastic engine in it. It's a little bit longer wheelbase, but I figured we can marry them up, and that's something I like doing. So the end result is this. Um, the seat is actually from uh, one of the Hot Wheels. Uh, it was a little bit larger scale, kind of ratted out uh, 29 Model A, uh, which I need to find the body because I met a girl and I want to do a custom for her and her husband. Um, just met her in a hobby shop. Anyways, uh, long story short, this is the chassis. I've kind of whittled it down to make it fit. And there's a couple different types of uh, of the the styrene that I've already got in place. What I didn't want to do is I didn't want to glue the body to the chassis just yet so I put in these kind of spacers to kind of give myself uh, a level point on the chassis. Um, and here I've got two pieces that are just sticking out. Basically the body is going to rest on that height and then I'm also going to use these as a way of creating running boards. And how this is coming together is basically I did have to do some extra grinding to this body, uh, getting rid of the wheel wells, um, and then leveling off this little notch here in the back. Uh, and then I have to custom build a dashboard and a steering wheel. Um, but basically, this comes together pretty much flush without any efforts, and it rolls. Um, in fact, I'll prove it, dadgummit. Uh, but it's super low to the ground, which is good. Problem is, though, this bed here doesn't really want to sit uh, too close to it. So one thing, I, first thing I had to do is I had to get it to where it, it cleared. Now I haven't got this position yet, so there's a little bit of wobble, but basically uh, the back wheel's clear. Uh, of course, I had to get rid of some of the floor pan, and I'll end up filing these down a little bit more to kind of uh, get... Uh, this kind of level and truly square uh, but like any rat rod it's just going to sit there the way i did that was by running a few different thicknesses of strips kind of filling in the gap you can see the remnants of the the stud and basically i set it up to where it could just sit flush i also kind of gave myself a fail proof uh, in case i accidentally attached it or if it just wasn't ready or actually there's a couple different uses. Then after I did this, I realized if I wanted to, I could insert an extra piece here and give the bed more of a rake uh, when it sits flush on here. So, anyways, that's one example. And you can see here on the sides how this bar just kind of comes out on either either side of this this truck. But then you talk about this massive gap between the bed and the the truck. Well, every old truck has a toolbox, and so what I did was I created this. It's going to be, it's going to look like uh, an old-fashioned toolbox, and it's designed to sit on there uh, with enough clearance. But really, what it's going to do is it's going to hide that gap. And so when I made this, I just used this squared tubing, this larger size tubing, cut it into the shape of a T that would fit for the 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 bed. I used that gray strip that goes perfectly in between there to serve as sort of like the bed. I will be putting opening doors and I'll be doing that using the L bracket sheets that are super thin. Um, so that, that's going to be a work in progress. I think I'm doing like a work in progress Wednesday. Anyways, I'm nine minutes into this thing. So this is going to sit here like this and I'm still kind of up in the air as to what I'm going to do with this tiny little gap here. But when it all goes together, and I don't have this in place, but you can see that, and there's going to be some, some body work here that I'm going to do, but it hides that space perfectly. So now I have this ratted out Chevy pickup um, with a basically a Pro Street engine in it. And this sucker sits low to the ground, super low to the ground. 
The original chassis is uh, says it's a 1950 Chevy. So, anyways, um, so another use of the calipers too, by the way, if um, or using uh, styrene for different purposes. If you wanted to maybe put in a different set of seats, and get the Porsche Outlaw 956, I believe, uh, that I'm working on. And uh, I didn't like the seats that were in it. Um, I didn't like the roof on it either. Um, and this is a work in progress because I can only find one of these freaking cars. It'd be nice to find another one. But um, basically, I kind of gutted this out, put in a set of Acura and um, NSX seats. And I'm working on putting a new dash in it with a more refined steering wheel. But basically, if you wanted to, and it's a nice little convertible top, by the way. Yeah. Um, anyways, that's coming together. For bare metal Hot Wheels, I actually want to touch base real quick. I talked about scraping off the paint around the headlights to kind of give it a natural dull look. And if you look closely, and I don't think this camera is going to do it any justice, but basically um, you can use your razor blade and just run horizontal and vertical gouges into the metal very carefully. And you can create the effect of the headlight. So that's just kind of interesting. Um, for the taillights, you basically can dab it with a silver sharpie and then go over it with a red sharpie and it will have that kind of luminescent, reflective quality to it. Uh, again, I consider myself a hack when it comes to customs, but um, you know, using these plastics, uh, they work well, they bond well with metal. Um, depending on the type of glue that you use, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty intense. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, like I said, I'm going to put links to Kevin Creedon, Will Witters, Bare Metal Hot Wheels, and I'm going to do a couple Facebook posts, the Fantasmical uh, Pooch uh, page. I'll put a link to that as well. And then the Unibobbers. Uh, join that. It's a fantastic group. Uh, a lot of cool customs. But uh, annoy the hell out of them and tell them Troy sent you. Troy Grant. You guys have a great day. Happy cracking. And Pooch, your car's coming by the end of February.